Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today we are learning how to make a layered t-shirt using Cricut Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So Cricut's Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets are a fun and easy way to make professional level t-shirts that won't peel, crack, or flake. And you can get really, really vibrant colors that are permanently infused into the material when you use it. And you can create designs with multiple colors, which is what I want to show you how to do today. So this personalized t-shirt here I made using Cricut's Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets that I combined together for a fun summer look. It's so vibrant, isn't it? So for this project, you're gonna want a Cricut Explorer or Maker, either one works fine. We use the fine point blade. An easy press, whether it's the original or the Easy Press 2, and it needs to be big enough so that um, it'll cover your whole design in one pass. You could also use a heat press, but you can't use a household iron because it won't get consistently hot enough across the whole hot, hot surface, you know, the surface of it, to properly infuse that ink, and it's typically not big enough for a t-shirt design anyway. Beyond the machines, you're going to need the Cricut Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets and the colors or patterns that you want to use. I am using red and blue, a green standard grip cutting mat, an easy press pressing mat. I'm actually going to use the medium and large sizes for this project, a piece of white, white, it's got to be white cardstock, a piece of butcher paper, and then that will come inside your Infusible Ink Transfer Sheet package, and some scissors and some tweezers, and of course you need t-shirt itself. So I am using one of Cricut's own t-shirts. This is a woman's XL shirt and I'm using it so that we can see exactly how it works with their products. Now you should be able to use another shirt with very like 100% polyester or near to it but we're not testing that today. We'll do that in a future video. And of course you need a design. So I've created this flip-flop design because I think it's perfect for summer and it's also perfect for an infusible ink project because we've got multiple colors going on that touch without overlapping and I'm going to explain all of this to you and how it works to use multiple colors and you're also welcome to use this design free. So let me show you where to get the free design, how to personalize it with your own name, and how to put it onto a t-shirt with infusible ink transfer sheets. All right, the first thing we need to do is get our design ready for our infusible ink layered project. I've created a special design just for this, which is perfect for learning and fun to do as well. You'll find it over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. And you'll want to go up to libraries here in the red bar. And if you don't have a password yet, it's free. You can click this to get one. But if you've got one, go ahead and click enter the library. And you'll be asked to put in your password right here in the password box. So just go ahead and type that in and press enter. You will find the files all listed in chronological order as well as separated by various themes and stuff. You're looking for the flip flops SVG files. So just go ahead and click on that and it will download uh, to your, usually to your downloads folder. We're gonna open that up so we can see what it looks like. So here it is, and we're looking for the SVG file. So now we're gonna go over to Cricut Design Space, and we're gonna upload that file. So first we're gonna click on New Project, and then click on Upload, and then click on Upload Image, and click Browse. And we're going to look for, in our Downloads folder, for the Flip Flops doc, uh, directory, and we want the SVG file. We're gonna click on Open, and it's going to upload to Cricut Design Space, and this is what it looks like. There's some different flip-flops in here, and we click Save. And then we're going to select it and insert it onto our canvas, just like this. I'm going to make it a little smaller, the canvas a little smaller with the uh, minus sign in the lower left corner so I can see everything. So this design has four different styles of flip-flops. You can color them however you like. Uh, we're going to concentrate on this one in the upper left corner. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the other things that we don't need. So I'm going to ungroup everything. And that will leave just four groups here. And this group, and hold on the shift key, this one, and this one. These three here, you can see over in the panel on the right. I'm going to go ahead and delete those because we're not going to use those today. All right, so we're left with this one. Now we're going to put this onto a t-shirt. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click on templates and bring up a t-shirt template. So I need the classic shirts. And I'm going to change it to woman's short sleeve shirt. And this shirt is size XL, XX large. And I'm going to hide the grid using the box in the upper left corner. You click on it twice and the grid will go away right here. All right, so here is my here my, is my flip-flop design. I've already sized this uh, for my project. It's just under nine inches tall and seven and a half inches wide. And I think this is a great size for this shirt. But of course, if you want to make it smaller or larger, you can use the resize button in the corner. Uh, just click and drag that like this, and it will make it smaller and larger. So let's first um, let's undo that and make it just a little bit bigger so we can see it here. I want to put my name on this solid flip-flop right here. So I'm going to click on text and I'm going to type my name, Jennifer. And I am then going to use this uh, sort of circle arrow. And I'm going to click and drag it until it's rotated about the way I want it to. And we can click and drag this over to my flip-flop so we can actually see what we're doing and line it up. That actually looks pretty darn good. Um, so let me scroll, uh, zoom out a little bit more so you can see this even better. So now you get to decide what size and what style of font you would like. I want to use something a little bit more feminine. So I am going to go up to the font menu. While that text is still selected, we can see that select box around it. And I am going to search on a font that I have purchased before called Michelle. Here it is, Michelle Script. It's available from Design Bundles. Um, I'll put the link to it in the video description. I really like it. It's a very pretty script font. Now you'll notice right away that it's not, the letters are not connecting. And whenever we have a script font, we want to make sure that they're connecting. And we can fix this by going up to letter space right here and decrease the size of letter spacing until our letters are touching like that. And then we can resize it again until it fits the, until it fits our flip flop and looks good. I think that looks pretty good right there. So you can use whatever font you want. I recommend that you uh, use a script font just because it's going to be a little bit easier, right, for you to uh, weed it. But since everything's connected, but you certainly don't have to. It is absolutely your choice. And now we need to actually have, I want this, this isn't going to be its own layer. This is going to be cut out of the flip-flop. So whatever color that's behind the flip-flop will show. In this case, it's going to be a white t-shirt. So I need to slice this out of my red flip-flop. So I'm going to keep this text selected so we've, we can see that blue box. We can see over here in the menu that it's selected as well. And it looks the way we want it to. And we're going to hold down the shift key and we're going to select the red flip-flop. So now we actually it's grouped. We need to ungroup this first. So we need to make sure it's out of a group. So just click that ungroup icon. And we're going to also send it to the back so that we can see our font. So arrange, send to back. All right, we want to select the text. There we go, there's the text and the red layer like this. So we've got, oops, we selected the blue layer because you can always tell over here in the layers panel what you're doing. So always keep an eye on that layers panel. Let's try that again. I'm gonna select down here and this time I got the red layer, so that's good. And then I'm gonna hold on the shift key and I can either like click right here or I can click on the font. I'll click right here. Then we know I'm gonna get those two layers I want. So now we have just that red layer and just our font layer. And that's exactly what we want. It's very important when you do a slice, you have just these two layers selected. Now they're not in groups or anything like that, okay? So we've got our two layers selected and we're ready to slice now. We're gonna come down here to the bottom right corner and there's an icon that says slice. I'm gonna click that. And at first it might seem like I didn't do anything, but it has. And you will see you now have slice results up here and you have an extra layer that you didn't have before. So if I click on one of these layers, 
which is this one. It shows up as a black sort of line here. Black, my, my name in black. And we're going to delete this. We don't need that layer. We're also going to delete this one, which is, which is what was sliced out of that red flip-flop. So now it's my name in red. We're going to delete that layer too. And this is what we're left with. Just two layers, red and blue. And that's exactly what you want. So we're going to layer this using our Cricut Infusible Ink Transfer Sheets. Not the way that we would do vinyl, however. We're going to use the slice and set method, which is what basically I've already got it set up for you. So what we have here is this red layer, and I can move it around, and you'll see that it's just everything that's red is right here and ready to go. And here's a blue layer, and it's all ready to go. Now, if you were doing this, uh, you were trying to create a design yourself, you would have to do the slicing and everything yourself to make this design, but I've got it all set up for you, so this is the perfect infusible ink project when you want to learn how to layer. So we d we're going to use these two colors, and we're actually going to put the blue on the red, and then we're going to attach it to, we're going to apply it to our t-shirt, and I will, of course, show you how to do that. So we are ready to go. We're ready to make this. We don't have to do anything else unless, of course, you're resizing or something. But I think this is the perfect size right now. So we need to go ahead and click Make It. And we can see we have our blue layer and we have our red layer. Now, there's two very important things that we have to do. The first is that all infusible ink projects need to be mirrored. So we're going to go ahead and toggle Mirror On right now for these projects, just like that. So now everything is mirrored. It's very important to do that. Don't forget to do that. The second thing that we need to do, because this is a layered project, is we need to make sure that we have enough of the carrier sheet to layer our layer both colors onto. So by that I mean, let's take a look at the red layer. So right now on the red layer, we can see one whole flip-flop. We're only missing the little blue strap on this one. On this one, however, we can't see the top, right? This flip-flop would actually be a little taller once we have the blue on it. If I were to cut it out like this right now, we wouldn't have enough carrier sheet above our this flip-flop for us to layer that blue onto. So what we need to do is lower this down so that we make sure that we have plenty of room for setting our layer onto the carrier sheet before we press it. So I'm just sliding it down, I'm just clicking and dragging it down right here in the, the map preview screen to make sure that I've got plenty of that carrier sheet. And that's, that's very important to do. And that does mean essentially this part is going to have to get wasted because we're going to be transferring it to that carrier sheet. And let me show you what I mean, okay? So if we were right now to, let's say, move this over to the other mat so that we can put them both together so we can see. So I'm gonna move it over to the red mat. We're gonna put them together as if we were doing it. So first of all, we need to have a little more space over here too. But we need to have, like if we put this up here like this, and put this here, this is where that red layer needs to be in order for the blue layer to be layered on top of it. And I realize this might not make a lot of sense right now, but you're gonna understand so much better when we actually do this. So, but it's important right now, if you're working alongside me, that you move down that red layer and just move it over to the right just a tad. So I'm gonna move this back to the blue mat. And this can cut, so this can cut out just like this. And this is gonna cut out here. So now we're gonna have plenty of space up here for the actual blue part of the flip-flop. All right, so we're ready to make this. Let's go ahead and click continue. And we're going to use my Cricut Explorer Air 2 for this. And we want to make sure that we are using the infusible ink as our material. So we're gonna click on browse all materials and scroll down under iron on and use infusible ink transfer sheet and click done. Now in my test that I did before, I needed to have my pressure set to more. I needed to make sure that my blade was cleaned and I did that using my aluminum foil ball method, which I've described many times, but I'll also show you when we go over to cut it right now. All right, it's time to cut out the infusible ink transfer sheets. 
and our first color is going to be, let's double check this, our first color is the blue transfer sheet. So let's go ahead and put the blue on. So this is the Cricut Infusible ink and this is the packaging it comes in. I have already opened this because I did my test with the uh, tropical floral. So this box is uh, tropical floral and navy blue. And if you are unfamiliar with Cricut Infusible inks, you will notice when you take them out of the package that they look like they're a different color, actually even a different hue, and they look faded. Don't worry. There's nothing wrong with your infusible ink transfer sheets. This is just how they look before you apply them to your project, okay? So we're going to use the navy blue sheet. So let's put this back here so it's nice and safe. All right. And we're gonna want to put, we, it comes with um, butcher paper, which we need for when we actually put this onto our project. So we'll set that there. Now, the infusible ink comes with a, a paper layer, which is the colored or pattern layer, and a liner or carrier sheet. Um, so you wanna put it shiny side down. So this is the shiny side. This is the side that has the liner carrier sheet. You put that down on your mat like this. You do want to use a standard grip mat, just like I'm using. And uh, make sure you, as always, line this up as best as you can. I recommend that you have clean hands when you do this. Uh, minimize oil that transfers. Use a brayer so that you're not, you know, getting, because especially in this case, this is a nice, pretty solid. We don't want to see any weird, um, you know, oily fingerprints or anything like that. So we get that all put down on our mat and get our Cricut going. I'm going to load this in and we're just using the regular uh, fine point blade for this project. All right, so it's loaded. Now, as I mentioned, uh, it's always a good idea to make sure that your blade is clean. And to do that, I just pop out my blade like this and I um, depress the plunger on the blade. Always be careful. This is a very sharp blade and I just poke this aluminum ball and it helps to remove any little bits of glitter, paper, or vinyl, anything that might be stuck on it so that it cuts as smoothly and as cleanly as possible. All right, that should be good. Put that back in there. Make sure it's, it's all the way down and then close the clamp like that. All right, so we're now ready to cut this. So let's go ahead and press the button. And the word of the day is cricket time, which is a word I use when I am measuring how long something's gonna take based on how long it's gonna take to cut on my cricket. For now, let's take this off of our cutting mat. So we're gonna flip it over, remove it like this. There we go. So there is this that on top so it stays in place. All right, so it's time to do our red layer. So let's take off one of the red layers. Well, we, we have to take all of this out. So whenever you open up a new uh, roll of infusible ink transfer sheets, there's like a little note reminding you where to go to get directions because I'm sure people will confuse with, with vinyl and be stumped and there's also butcher paper in here and there's also a swatch of fabric so that you can test things out on fabric before you use an expensive shirt and make a mistake so we don't want just one sheet of the two sheets that come on this particular roll and they're already cut to size which is awesome i love that Let's set this over here all right, so we're gonna put this under our mat just like we did before. And use my brayer so that I minimize how much of the oils from my hand are transferring to it, just to keep it nice and clean and vivid. Put this in my machine. Remove this, see how this looked. 
looks great. It's all mirrored just like it's supposed to be. Awesome. So there's my name, mirror image, and there's the design. So let's uh, flip this over and take this off the mat. All right, so we're going to start with the red layer and we're going to get it ready to go and then we're going to put a blue layer on it. This is how this is going to work. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut away the sections. So all of this stuff here, we don't need that um, because it's extra. So you can see the design here. We only want this top corner to be left on the carrier sheet. This we can just go ahead and trim off right now and save for another project. So I will use my knife actually to go ahead and do this. And I'm just gonna go right to here. Just make sure that you're not too close to the edge of your design there. You don't wanna accidentally cut off any parts that you needed. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut off this little corner, this little bit down here, because we don't need this little bit. Now that we've cut our design into our transfer sheet, it's time to reveal it. And what we need to do now is to remove all of these negative parts here. So all of this needs to come out, all the parts. And what we need to keep are, is like this part with the sandal, let me hold this up so you can see a little better. We want to keep on the transfer sheet this part and this part here and then the stripes here and the strap there. That's our goal. So we're supposed to bend and crack it. So, so you can see here, if you do this, it helps it come off a little bit better. Not bend it. Um, you know, a uh, I'm not bending it, that's important. I'm not creasing it here. I'm just, just trying to, like you can see here, how it's, it kind of separates as we move it like this. Here you can see as well, right? This is the kind of thing that they're referring to. It's gonna make it a lot easier when we go to transfer this to, or re remove the extra that we don't need. Okay, let's go ahead and try removing the extra now. So in the corner, I'm going to take a little bit, separate it from the liner as well as I can. So I've separated it from the liner right here and we're going to pull it away and you can see it's going to leave behind our design. So we want to go ahead and carefully do this. I don't want it to tear. Oh, I see, because I know why it's doing that. All right. I'm going to cut away some of this extra right now. And we can save all of this too, by the way. All of this can be saved because we can put it onto another piece of transfer, a liner. It's, it's just, it might be hard to cut. I don't know if we can cut it. Uh, I guess we'll see. So let's carefully remove this. There we go. Got that out. So now we need to get out the inside of the foot flap, like that. And we need to get out these letters. So I don't know how tricky this is going to be. We're going to find out together. <laughs> so remember we want to remove the letters. All right, so 
we were able to remove my name with just a little one little issue I see the little uh, middle part of the J wanted to come with it so we can fix that and put that back in place right here and press that down and then it looks like this also flipped over let's put this back into place and it's going to of course go onto our shirt like this don't worry about it being mirror image what we want to see right now is this this is the important part okay so now it's time to put on our blue layer so our next step is to combine our infusible ink color layers so unlike with vinyl where we would take this layer and put it onto our shirt and then take the other layers and put them on we're going to layer everything onto this one piece of liner this carrier sheet and then transfer it as a whole that's very important because repeated pressings um, can damage can like make your colors fade and stuff like that so this time we want to take the blue section you know the blue parts out and put them in place so wow now we need to layer our blue onto our red so we're just going to put them together like puzzle pieces so blue goes on here so that's the blue layer so can you see that the blue layer is good to go all right, so now we need to do the other side. And this goes up here at the top. And there we have our layered infusible ink pattern ready to go on to our project. Doesn't that look awesome? All right, so I think we're ready now to, to put our layered infusible ink project onto our t-shirt. For this, we're going to need a piece of butcher paper, a piece of cardstock, which we have here. So butcher paper and cardstock, and of course our layered image, our layered design, which we've got ready to go. Uh, we need a uh, appropriate Cricut infusible ink blank. So I have a white t-shirt here all ready for us to go as well. We're also going to want our pressing mat. So I'm actually going to use this small one. I'm going to put it inside the shirt and I'm also going to use the big one and we're going to put it underneath everything. And of course we also need our easy press and I'm going to use the original easy press for this because it's important that our design fit on this. So this is not turned on, don't worry. So I'm going to just double check that it'll fit on here completely, which it looks like it just will. So that's really important that we do that. In fact, if we turn it a little bit like this, we can see that it does, it does definitely fit on there. So that's important that you need to have, make sure your easy press will cover the design entirely in one pressing. So we're going to want to go over to Cricut and look at what they tell us to use in their calculator. So I'm heading over to Cricut. So here is the Cricut EasyPress heat transfer guide. I have a link to this below the video as well as in my tutorial on my blog. Now we're gonna use the original Cricut EasyPress. That's the one I'm, that's the Wisteria one that I showed you. And if you're not sure, there's a little link here that will help you figure out which EasyPress you have. And we are going to use the infusible ink transfer sheets and our base material is a t-shirt. All right, so we click apply and then it tells us exactly what to do. So we wanna set our easy press to 360 degrees, which is the maximum for the original easy press. And we're gonna to wanna to preheat our shirt for 15 seconds. And this also shows us the layers that we need to have our shirt. So first we have our pressing mat, then our shirt that has a piece of paper inside of it. And then we have our design and then our butcher paper and then our easy press itself and I'm going to go through all of that with you. So let's hop back over to, there we go. All right, so we need to preheat this to 360. So we're going to press this temperature button right here and hold it down until it goes up to 360, which is its maximum for the original easy press and set that again. And then we're going to do, it wants to do 120 seconds. So I'm going to press the stopwatch button and 
hold down the plus key and it will uh, raise up in five second increments if I hold it down like I am. And we want to go to 120. There we go, and press the stopwatch again. So now it's going to heat up to the proper temperature and it's very important that you always use the right temperature for your easy press and for your what you're transferring and for your material itself. All right, so while that is heating up, let's set this to the side a little bit. We need to get our layers ready to go. So let's set these here for now. All right, so I'm gonna put my mat down on our surface. All right, so there is our mat. Our pressing mat is right here, good to go. Now the next layer is our t-shirt with the paper in it. And so I'm gonna open this up. So we want a t-shirt with our paper in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I have another easy press mat, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. So we want our paper. All right, this is our paper. And I'm gonna put this and the easy mat, mat press inside of it. You don't have to have that second mat, but I have it, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. It makes it a little easier for me. And I'm just opening up the shirt and sliding it in like this. It's a little dirty right there. Okay, so now you know, often I would use this center point to determine you know, w exactly where our design's gonna go, right? I would usually like iron it right there, but in this case, I'm not going to. Um, you can, if you want, you could use a ruler to help you figure out the right placement, right? So that you can see where it straight is, right? We want it to be nice and straight. Although, I mean, they're flip-flops, so you know. I can't say I'm super concerned about this, but this looks pretty straight to me, right? Coming right down the center there, okay. So we preheated this to 360 degrees, and we've got our t-shirt on a clean mat. We're going to put the cardstock, we put the cardstock inside of our t-shirt to prevent any bleed through, and we don't can't forget to use our lint roller. We want to be sure that the section that we are going to put our design on is super clean. All right, so now it's time to uh, cover the sheet with butcher paper larger than the heat plate, and we're gonna preheat it for 15 seconds. Okay, so we've got our butcher paper on here. We're gonna preheat this area for 15 seconds. So we're gonna just lift this up and put it down just like this, and just right down, and we're gonna press start. We're gonna watch until it gets to 105. You can kinda of see that a little bit. Oh, 105. So 105, there we go. All right, and we want to remove the butcher paper from the top of the shirt, just like this. So we'll set that there for now. Now we need to place our design down, liner side up. So we're going to place it down like this. So this is our design, and it goes down on our shirt like this. So we wanna make sure that we're centering it and we got it exactly where we want it to go. So I'm gonna use this V right here and kind of put it down in a line right down like this. Like this, this seems pretty good to me. And we can go ahead and do this to get it to adhere to our shirt like that. That looks good. All right, and then we're gonna put our butcher paper on top of it, just like that, right? So we've got the design and it's in place and we've got our butcher paper right here, just like this. Now we're going to slowly lift our press. I'm gonna put it onto, and we're gonna press it for 120 seconds. And then we're gonna slowly remove the butcher paper and then let it cool before we remove the liner. All right, ready? 120 seconds to make sure that we're covering our design completely. It's very important that uh, you not move your Cricut Easy Press at all. And we're gonna lift it straight up from our project. Slowly remove the butcher paper. And 
and we have to wait until it cools completely. So this is still warm, so we're going to wait. It seems like it's cooled, so let's give it a try. Let's take this off and see how we did. Awesome. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Look at that. That is so awesome, guys. It looks amazing. So this looks great. And this is beautiful. It's so smooth and clean. I love it. It looks like something you buy in a store, but it's got my name here. Isn't that awesome? I think this is going to be so super cute. And this looks like pretty much perfect. I see it just a little bit wears off right here. It's tiniest bit. Not a big deal at all. So this is what we had. This is what's left. Um, I don't see anything there that we're going to be transferring anywhere else, guys. <laughs> this is depleted. I mean, I, I mean, the blue is completely gone. There is no blue left. And there's a little bit of the red, but that's not that would be a ghost if you were to attempt to transfer that again. So this is a one-time use uh, transfer, which, you know, so is vinyl. So. so here is our completed shirt. Isn't it super awesome? awesome look at this look at how beautiful and vibrant these colors are we can stretch it without any issues there's no seams it's very light it's like it's like a t-shirt that we buy at the store it totally is let's look at the inside so you can see what it looks like on the other side this is what the inside of the shirt looks like looks pretty familiar right this looks like a shirt from the store and there we go. This is our finished shirt. I'm very pleased with it. And this is how we would do any layered sh project, whether it's for a t-shirt or a coaster or anything, tote bag, anything like that. The important thing is to remember that your pieces aren't overlapping each other. They're touching. It just barely touching or even there could even be space in between, but not overlapping, right? So either touching or space, but not overlap. And it turns out amazing. The Cricut infusible inks are brand new and not and not even in stores yet at the time I'm making this video. So everyone has a lot of questions about how they work with, with and all, all sorts of things. I've already done two other tutorials. One is on the basics of the infusible inks and one is on using the infusible ink markers and pens, which are a lot of fun. I encourage you to watch those videos to learn more about working with infusible inks and whether it's right for you. Now, I know you might be wondering if you have to use Cricut's t-shirts with the infusible inks. No, you don't have to. You will be able to find some t-shirts with a high polyester count that will work with infusible inks, but keep in mind that Cricut only guarantees results with their products that state that they're infusible ink compatible, and so proceed at your own risk. Always test first. Now to take care of your new infusible ink t-shirt, just machine wash it inside out with cold water and mild detergent. It's fine to put it into a dryer on low as well. Uh, you wanna avoid fabric softener, dryer sheets, and bleach. And if you take care of it, your infusible ink shirt can be washed over and over without any fading. Now if you have any questions about using cutting or applying the infusible ink transfer sheets, Please let me know. I'm happy to help. Leave a comment below this video or post over in my Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Remember, if you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time. Mm -hmm.